Dear listeners, good morning and welcome to Comme d'Archi, the podcast that opens the doors to the fascinating world of architecture. For newcomers, let me introduce myself. I'm the spokesperson of Anne-Charlotte Despont, PhD in History of Architecture, published author, head of a communication and development agency based in Paris, France, dedicated to architecture. Let's meet every week to discuss culture and architecture with specialists and learn how to look at projects through a context and diversity lens. Thank you for being with me today, and now it's time for talent. Bienvenue dans Comme d'Archie. Hi everybody, hi Louise Audibert. Hello Anne Charlotte. You represent the Hervé Audibert office today. In two, three sentences, could you describe the office? Um, thank you for welcoming us. As you said, uh, created in 2012, L'Atelier Vaudibert, the Parisian workshop focuses on multidisciplinary approaches in order to design the most suitable lighting to complement the perception of the place. Now, you will talk to us about a bright dialogue. Yes, indeed. Like setting a scene, it tends to broaden the perception of spaces by the alternating of light and shade. In this respect, we always take into account all the aspects of the building or place and think about the light design according to the projects. After a few years of experience, we took the time to think about our creations and realized some similarities in the way we work on certain buildings. For example, we could create a lighting design in order to articulate a bright dialogue between inside and outside of a building. This is how we approached the lighting design on Cap 3000, a huge shopping mall located near Nice in south of France. Commissioned by Alteria Cogedim, the real estate developer, Mark Wilson of Group 6 was the building architect and Patrick Jouan, associated with Sandit Monku, were the interior designers. L'atelier Ash Audibert has worked on building facades as well as interior layouts. Patrick Jouan was looking for water shapes that recalled the Mediterranean Sea and the Var River region. During our brainstorming sessions, he talked about movement, fluidity and flexibility. So we took his ideas and translated them into sources of light. We developed spinning lights that project onto the ceiling a meandering river which, when it meets an obstacle, goes around it by making eddies. We designed these obstacles as rocks that interrupt the flow. The obstacles are flexible and luminous forms made of light boxes. We drew this luminous decoration on the ceiling of galleries of the shopping center. These fixtures that project the decoration are also functional source of lights. In example, we made sure they still responded to the standard lighting required in these types of places that receive the public, where no other sources of light interact with the ceilings. We relied on the company Equivalent, based in Nice, to help us design and produce all the fixtures we had imagined. The entire construction project was carried out in close collaboration with Patrick Jouan, whom we systematically involved in our research. Similarly, we contributed to the beautiful candelabras he designed by perfecting the details of the light head in collaboration with the Murano glass master with the placement of the silvering on the cap and the placement of the light sources to give life to the glass. At Cap 3000, the luminous dialogue between the exteriors and interiors is achieved thanks to the anamorphosis designed by L'Atelier Vaudibert. As soon as they enter, visitors are invited to plunge into an aquatic atmosphere thanks to a lighting system inspired by the oceanic snows and the wandering nature of the Var. In addition to this, we have worked with Jacques Ferrier on two major projects, Village Nature in the east of Paris, near Disneyland Paris, and Grand Central, near the Saint-Lazare train station in Paris. In both these projects, 
we created the same bright dialogue between the inside and outside of the building. Village Nature is a 250 hectare estate with 5,000 lodgings that can accommodate 25,000 visitors. We were interested with the lighting of the entire site, except for the accommodations. The idea was to let nature exist in every field. L'atelier also had to take into account that the night illumination of public sites were required to meet precise standards. Nevertheless, we wanted a stroll in this area to feel like a nocturnal walk on a country road, which meant giving the eye the possibility of getting used to an half light that allowed visibility of the stars. So we had to be able to put an important distance between each light in order to create this half-light effect. To do this, we first had to meet with the competent services to make sure they agreed to deviate from the usual norms by offering lanterns to visitors to help them in their walking. We were thus able to imagine a light design free of constraints. People who walk on this site at night go from one luminous event to another, 30 to 50 meters apart, which give landmarks in the wandering by not plunging the visitors in complete darkness. Thus, the stars remain visible and the fauna and the flora bloom without inconvenience. In keeping with the nature theme, We designed and produced 18 different types of light sources in the plant producer so that their daytime appearance would not clash with this natural environment. And on this side, our luminous dialogue took shape at the level of the aqualagon that we also put in light. It is the nerve center of Village Nature, a park made up of aquatic animations. This place, designed by Jacques Ferrier, as pools surrounded by lush vegetation. The idea here was to get rid of all the light sources and place them only at the top of this high building. Thus, the intensive beams of the projectors crossing the vegetation reproduce on the ground the shadow projected by the sun's rays. No other light source is present on this universe, leaving technology far behind. A last example of our work that illustrates the luminous dialogue between interior and exterior spaces is the lighting of the National Dance Center. The two architects, Claire Guies and Antoinette Robin, had entrusted us with the lighting design of the interior and exterior of the building. It was the rehabilitation of a brutalist concrete building designed by Jacques Calis which until then was host the administrative city of Pantin. We wanted to highlight all the cultural energy that this building was going to welcome in its rich days of meetings. For the lighting of the facades, we didn't want to plagiarize the solar lights, as no one does a better job than a sun. And we wanted our work to be purposeful and have meaning. We imagined a nocturnal enhancement by backlighting. In example, leaving the facade in the dark and illuminating all the openings from the inside. In this way, we could highlight the architectural details of the balconies and masks of concrete lace. To tell the story of the energy we welcomed in, the idea was to introduce color into the spaces. Thus, When the dancers left the studios and turned off the functional light, it turned on a colored light that flooded the studio. Actually, the more the building was emptied of its occupants, the more the color existed inside and animated the facades of the building. Thank you, Louise, for your testimony. Thank you for hosting us on your podcast. It was not easy to select the project that best illustrates the work de l'atelier. I hope I have succeeded in showing our way and our many challenges in the field of architectural lighting. Bye bye everybody and see you next Wednesday for our new Kandarchi in English. Take care of yourself. Bye.
Thank you for listening. Don't forget to tune in to our previous content on Instagram at Comdarchi Podcast. If you like it, make sure to promote the podcast by giving it five stars on Apple Podcast and adding a comment or on any of your favorite podcast platforms. And don't forget to subscribe and listen to all of our episodes for free. See you soon. And until then, take care of yourself.